Over time, you'll find that you want to cut a variety of different mediums using your silhouette machine. Depending on its capabilities, you can cut anything from the thinnest of vinyls right the way through to thicker and more dense mediums. This will depend on the machine you are using. Some mediums will need to have more power behind the blade. There are a variety of different alterations you can make, giving you lots and lots of different possibilities when creating with a silhouette. And the beauty of the software is that it allows you to adapt for all of these different opportunities. Some may require different blades, and information on these can be found on the Craft Store website. So let's bring a design in to start with. Let's use the dinosaur and the letter D. I'll need to decide what I want to cut this dinosaur from. Do I want to create it with vinyl to go on a t-shirt? Do I want to cut it out of card for a gift tag? Or maybe paper for a birthday card? Perhaps fabric to applique onto a cushion? Or maybe I want to cut it out of balsa wood for a home decor project? These can all be accommodated for when we send to print. This is the phrase we use when we are ready to cut out our designs. I say cut, but of course it could be that I want to draw with a pen. Even more choices. In the top right hand corner you will find the tab that says send. This is where you will find all of the settings that can give you the perfect results. Depending on the version of the software you have, you have a variety of headings. Simple, line, fill and layer. Layer will only appear if you have upgraded from the basic version of the software. Let's take a look at the simple heading first. This is a more than adequate way to cut designs and the most common choice for people to use. Depending on your die cutting machine, you'll have one or two carriages. I'm working with a Cameo 4. So I have two carriages as you can see. Carriage number one holds the tool on the left hand side. This carriage is built for speed and is used for a majority of light to medium weight mediums. Carriage number two on the right has more power behind it. This is the carriage that you tend to use with specialised blades such as the rotary cutter and the deeper cutting blades. You need to have the power of carriage 2 for these blades to operate, which is why they are not compatible with some of the earlier release machines. You'll notice that the blades will have numbers on, number 1 for carriage 1, number 2 for carriage 2. So how do you know which blade to use? Well this will depend on the medium that you're working with. So let's have a look at carriage 1 to start with. This is the carriage that will hold the blade that comes with your silhouette machine. Under the heading of material, you will have a whole host of different mediums that you can work with. These are settings that have been created as suggestions, but are all adaptable and may need tweaking. For instance, not all cardstock of the same weight has the same density, so the settings will need to be adjusted. Let me give you an analogy. A kilo of feathers and a kilo of concrete weigh exactly the same, but they have very different densities. If you have a particular brand of cardstock that you like to use, then the good news is you can save the settings so you don't have to adjust them every single time. More about this later. You will notice that some of the mediums have a warning triangle by the side of them. For instance, balsa wood. This is because this type of medium is not compatible with carriage number one. However, it will be compatible with carriage number two, but we'll look at that later. So as you can see, there are a lot of presets in here already. It may be that these are suitable straight away, or you may need to tweak them. For instance, your cardstock may be a slightly different density, so you'll need to tweak in those circumstances. And you may be using an older blade. That might be another reason for you to increase the blade depth. These are all features that you will get used to as time goes on. 
As I mentioned, when you're working with specific brands or favorites, you may find that you want to keep those settings for the next time you use them. This will be saved under the headings User Defined. If you are using Auto Detect Blades, the next heading, Action, can be kept on Auto and it will change the action depending on the tool being used. However, there are manual choices that can be made if an Auto Blade isn't being used. This gives you a certain amount of editing detail even when you're about to send to cut. They will only be active if you have more than one design in your work area. So let's have a look at this dinosaur that we've got and the letter D in the work area. We can still manipulate these somewhat, within reason. You can move them around without needing to go back into design. So I can overlap the letter D on top of the dinosaur. If I want to resize or alter the order, then I will need to go back into Design tab at the top. If I draw a box around everything, you can see that both the dinosaur and the letter D have been selected, but they are also grouped together. This outer box shows that. But look what happens when I go outside of the medium area. Part of the design goes light, and this is because it's outside of the cutting area, so it won't cut the lighter shaded area. If I did continue to send to cut, then I would get a warning alerting me of this, asking if I want to proceed. So let's bring it to a more central position, and let's look at no cut, cut, and cut edge. No cut is exactly that, by clicking on that, the cutting line disappears and no cut will be made. By selecting cut, all of the cut lines will be active and will in turn be cut by your machine. But because these designs overlap, the letter D will cut a piece out of the neck of the dinosaur. So if I notice this and decide that I want to cut them independently, I can move the letter D out of the way and then it won't cut into the dinosaur. However, there might be a situation when I just want to cut the outermost line, and that's where cut edge would be the best option. I would simply click on it, and you can see that the outermost area will cut, and the intersection won't. The next section on the screen relates to the suggested settings for the project you are creating. It's often a good idea to start with the suggested settings and alter them as and when you need to. So what do these settings mean? The blade depth refers to how much of the blade is exposed. If you're working with an auto blade, this will automatically be altered when your machine starts to cut. If you are working with a manual blade, then you will need to alter the dial on the blade before you start to cut. Force relates to pressure applied to the tool and can be increased or decreased. Speed is pretty self-explanatory and can be increased or decreased too. Pass relates to the number of times that the blade will complete the design. Sometimes you may want to increase this for a double cut, which means the blade will repeat the cut before ejecting the mat. If you do make any alterations, then you will have the opportunity to save these as a new medium. You click on Save As and then give your medium a title. Click on the plus and then it will be added to your user-defined mediums. The original medium will stay exactly as it was and you will have added a new variation to your own settings. You also have the opportunity to overcut by checking this box. What this means is when the lines cut, they will be extended by a tiny amount to ensure that the cut area is a nice crisp finish. So let's have a look at the line and fill options. But before we do that, let's go back into design and I'll take out the colour fills that are used. You will see that when I created the designs of the dinosaur and the letter D, I did these with two different colour lines. 
a red line for the dinosaur and a green line for the letter D. This was because I knew I would want to cut them out of different mediums. When you use different colour lines, it means that when you go to send, you can choose different settings for each of the cut lines. Fill works in a similar way. Layer is the final option and this will be there if you've upgraded your software. If you want to know more about that then check out our upgrades video or our send to cut class where we go into the settings in greater detail. Once you have all your settings in place you may like to do a test cut and that can be done by clicking on test and a little triangle and a square will be cut out of your medium but away from your design. When you're happy then you click on send and it will complete the whole of your design as you've requested. If you need any help then you can click on the little mortarboard and that will show you a variety of different hints and tips to help you get started should you need them. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any other videos that might help you with your Silhouette software.